Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, Praha Maharaj, for giving your valuable time and association this morning. Please take over the call, Maharaj. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Fifth canto, 28th chapter, verses 31 to 33, Maharaj Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, um, these are in the prose. So, generally, we don't chant the prose. We go right when there is an active audience, we do word for word, but we can go right to the translation here. Translation The ruler of this island, the son of Maharaj Pirat, named. Vitrihotra had two sons named Ramanaka and Dataki. He granted the two sides of the islands to these two sons, and then he personally engaged himself in activities for the sake of the Supreme Personality of the Godhead, like his elder brother made a titi. Verse number 32. With the fulfillment of material desires, the inhabitants of this tract of land worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead as represented by Lord Brahma. They offer prayers to the Lord as follows. Yet karmanayam lingam brahma lingam janor jayat Ekatam avayam shantam tasmai bhagavate namaiti. Translation Lord Brahma is known as Karma Maya, the form of ritualistic ceremonies, because by performing ritualistic ceremonies, one may attain his position, and because the Vedic rituals, the kings become manifested from him. He is devoted to the Supreme Personality of Godhead without deviation. And therefore, in one sense, he is not different from the Lord. Nevertheless, he should be worshipped not as the monists worship him, but in duality. <clears throat> one should always remain a servitor of the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Worshipful Deity. We therefore offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Brahma, the form of manifest Vedic knowledge. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In this verse, the word karma mayam, attainable by the Vedic ritualistic system, is significant. The Vedas say, Swadharma nishtaya sata janbabi puma vinir chitam iti. One who strictly follows the principles of an ashram for at least 100 births will be rewarded the post of Lord Brahma. It is also significant that all Lord, although Lord Brahma is extremely powerful, he never thinks himself one with the Supreme Lord. He always knows that he is an eternal servant of the Lord because the Lord and the servant are identical on the spiritual platform. Brahma is here and addressed as Bhagavan. Bhagavan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, but if a devotee serves him with full faith, the meaning of the Vedic literature is revealed to him. Therefore, Brahma is called Brahma Lingam, which indicates that his entire form consists of Vedic knowledge. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmelitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamene Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya Deve Sitarine 
Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadadara Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So within the material universe is the post of Brahma is the highest position and sometimes he is given that position as being a lord Rani Kasipu made the mistake of thinking Lord Brahma was the Supreme Lord. And therefore he started offering prayers, rituals, and various types of austerities to Lord Brahma, who appeared to him to, request, to grant his benediction. But when Brahma heard what he requested, he said, I cannot give you immortality because I am not immortal. And so in that particular pastime, the Brahma admits his situation. This happens again, where Narada Muni, after receiving knowledge from Lord Brahma, starts to worship him as the Supreme also. Narada is not an illusion, but Narada is playing the role <laughs> to help us understand that there is one Supreme Personality of God and everyone else is his servant. Uh, Ishwara, what is that? What is that? Ekala Ishwara Asabrita. Ekala Ishwar Krishna Asabrita. That there is only one Supreme Lord, Nityan Nityanam, Chaitanas Chaitananam. He is the maintainer of all of us including Lord Brahma himself. But Brahma has such a high position that this happens many times. He is seen as the Supreme. But Brahma is always aware of his position of not being the Supreme. But the Lord empowers his devotees, particularly those who are fully surrendered to him in devotion, to perform various activities on behalf of the Lord. So here, Lord Brahma is considered to be the form of manifest Vedic knowledge. Manifest means that he is personally on site to give knowledge to anyone and anyone if they are qualified to receive it. So that is Brahma's precision. Um, Brahma is the head of our Sampradaya, we are Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, Sampradaya, which includes Madhva Charya and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But there are four Sampradaya's head. Sampradaya means that lineage for coming directly from Krishna. Because Brahma heard from Krishna directly. Tene, Brahma, Hidai, Adikabaye. That in the heart of Lord Brahma, Krishna spoke Vedic knowledge. And that was, that was later recorded, which we know as the Brahma Samhita. We have the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita, which includes about 63 verses. But there were a hundred chapters of the of, uh, Brahma Samhita, which for some reason have been lost in time. And it seems like they were either destroyed or, I don't know, maybe they were never presented on this planet. But we only have that one. And that, by Lord Brahma, the Brahma Samhita, is so deep in philosophical and transcendental knowledge that you have to read it continuously over in order to begin to understand what is being explained as he describes the whole spiritual world and all of the categories within the spiritual world and the different levels of the spiritual world and the different activities within the categories as it goes from higher down to the lowest. 
And Krish Brahma had direct association with Krishna. Krishna spoke to Brahma. And uh, he received the knowledge directly from Krishna in the heart. But although he has such power and such great amount of knowledge, he understands his position. Uh, he is knowledge personified and therefore the, uh, he gives that knowledge in the form of teachings and his immediate student is Sri Narada Muni. So whatever Narada Muni is right, actually saying is coming from Lord Brahma. And whatever Vyasadeva is saying is coming from Narada, which is the connection with Lord Brahma. But the point Prabhupada wants to make is that although one may be very powerful and have extreme amounts of responsibility and delegating the knowledge and the services that they are delegated to do, they never think themselves but a devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, and we see that, that Indra, he gets proud of his position and he starts to challenge Krishna in different ways. He did that with stealing Krishna's calves and cows. And then we have another example when uh, Indra tried to kill the residents of Vrindavan and that's known as the Govardhan Leela. So we have uh, examples of those who have powerful and very important positions starting to think that they are the supreme. Now Brahma, at one point, came to Dwarka to visit Krishna. And Krishna was in one of his palaces. So Brahma came to the door and was greeted by Krishna's servant, who asked, who are you? Well, I am Lord Brahma. And the servant went in to speak to Krishna and said, Lord Brahma is here. Krishna responded, he, saying, by which Lord Brahma is it? The servant came back and told Lord Brahma, which one, or asked Lord Brahma, which one are you? Now, when he heard that, he became be be bewildered. He was thinking, well, I'm Lord Brahma. <laughs> Who else is there? But then uh, he responded back to the servant who said, who told, well, the four-headed Brahman is here at the door. So Krishna came out and greeted him. And there's a nice exchange. And Brahma just had to ask. You ask, which Brahma am I? But, you know, I, I'm Brahma. <laughs> and Krishna wanted to show him that, well, yes, it's true. But there are other, there's a Brahma for each universe. There's a Shiva for each universe. And there are different living beings, different living entities, and they're jiva. Shiva is not a jiva, though, but Brahma is a jiva. Um, and then Krishna called all the other Brahmanas from all the other universes, and they simultaneously came, and they all had many heads. Some had eight heads, some had ten heads. This was on. Some had even hundreds and thousands of heads. Why? Because this, depending on the size of the universe, Lord Brahma has that many heads. And so this universe that we live in is one of the smallest of all the universes. And so the Lord Brahma here has four heads. And uh, so Brahma got the understanding. So he knows his position, although he becomes bewildered, thinking that he's the only Brahma sometimes. In spiritual life, as one makes advancement in devotional service, one becomes empowered to do more and more things on behalf of the Lord. And one becomes more and more, what we say, glorious in the activities performed. And Krishna likes to glorify his devotee. And so 
the devotee is, is receiving more and more glory, eulogies, praise, benefits, gifts, so many things. But if a devotee thinks at any point that uh, now I'm supreme or now I'm an incarnation of the Lord, and this, uh, this in, in uh, Vedic terms is called the last snare of Maya. Snare means button. when Maya doesn't catch you any other way, she connects you, catches you this way. What is that? You're so great and powerful, you think that I'm the Supreme Lord or I'm an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. And then, and then it goes down even further. But that, that way of thinking is quite common. People think like that. And here we have the example of someone who's in knowledge, who knows who their position, who knows who they are, and doesn't try to surreptitiously or pretentiously take another position. What is that position? Gopi Bhatti Bhatti Kamalaya or Das and Das. The Bodhi thinks, well, I'm servant of the 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 servant. So there's no limit to that title because it can go on and on and on but always wanted to serve. So Brahma knows that. He knows that he is simply a servant, but he has a very powerful position. And this is, this is a very difficult situation because as one makes advancement, one, there is a tendency to become proud or to think that one is special. But that's available to anyone who surrenders to the Lord. And by following that process, one becomes glorious here. Bhagavan is a name for, or is a title given to the Supreme Lord, but Bhagavan here, he is addressed in the same way that he is not only Bhagavan, the Lord, but also dressed and seen as, a, as the servant of the Lord, but not the Lord himself. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Okay. Hey, well, here we are. We've been on the computer for hours and hours and hours now. So um, let's see. Well, that's the essence of this particular uh, verse here. He is Vedic knowledge personified. We have the Brahma Samhita. We have the words of Lord Brahma that's spoken in the Bhagavatam. We have Brahma's instructions to Narada. Mm -hmm. Brahma is knowledge. In fact, his whole body, as it says here, entire form consists of Vedic knowledge. He doesn't have a gross body. He has a subtle body. So he didn't, he didn't, although we can see a gross form, it's an, it's an expansion of his subtle form, which is given to us for the sake of uh, seeing, but he doesn't have a physical form. And that, that subtle form is made out of pure knowledge. Okay, so and so we find that this quandary where someone is powerful, but someone also 
takes a little, gets, becomes a little bit proud of their position and may even try to usurp someone else in a higher position, thinking they are equal to or better than that person. And this happens in spiritual life a lot. Okay, so we'll stop there. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Then for now to you. All glory to Shri How are you, Maharaj? Good. Uh yeah, we're in been just we're traveling, so we just got to the new place just last night. Oh, I see. I see. You're always traveling, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Maharaj, what a beautiful class. Amazing. Uh, you talked about the lineage lineage, and uh, remembered us what lineage we are from. You talked about uh, our Sampradaya, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya, Brahma Samhita. You talked about that uh, we have only one chapter, but I am pretty sure even if we find other chapters, there will be glorification of Krishna because this is what Brahma is doing. Uh, Sri Brahmaji, of course, uh, I love that uh, episode that you narrated that he went to visit uh, Krishna and he was thinking he's something, ha having four heads, but then, of course, Krishna invited uh, other Brahmas with hundreds of heads, thousands of heads, to speak of four heads. So, yeah, very subtle lesson for all of us. We many times think uh, that we are advancing or, or we are maybe... Uh, just a head in path of bhakti, but uh, we are nothing. We are nothing. Very, very subtle uh, teaching for all of us. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, if we always can remember that whatever we can do, or whatever we can achieve, it's simply by the grace of the Lord. That's all. All mercy of Srila Prabhupada. Yes, Maharaj. We simply need to understand, uh, that, as you said, Maharaj, go be uh, Kamal we are servant of the servant of the servant, certainly Maharaj. Dear devotees, if anybody has any questions, any comments, any realizations, please go ahead, unmute yourself or raise your hand, dear devotees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for a very beautiful class, Maharaj. I, I do have a question, Maharaj. So here they are talking about uh, we worship the Lord in duality. Uh, can you please explain that? Not yeah, that He is Simon. Persons that are representing the Lord are as good as the Lord, but at the same time they're not the Lord. That is called a chintya beta beta tattva. It's a chintya, means it's inconceivable. Beta beta means simultaneously non, simultaneously one and different. For example, the, the spirit, pure devotee spiritual master is called the servitor Godhead. He's considered to be Godhead who is in the position of serving. And then there's Godhead as in the position of being served. That's the Supreme Lord. So that title is given to those who are in that position of pure devotion to the Lord, and they're worshipped in, as in duality means they they're worshipped both as this as the representative of the Lord, and also in their own position as a as a devotee of the Lord. Now, the spiritual master is a devotee of the Lord, but at the same time he's worshipped and seen as a representative of the Lord. So that's the duality. Prabhupada precedes that, or makes that statement in reference to what he said earlier, is that uh, uh, the monists, they worship, you know, Brahma, that he is, he is the supreme. It's not a matter of duality, it's a matter of oneness. Thank you so much. Yes, definitely. Is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, very clear. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Indulika Mataji. Any other devotee has any question or realization? Please go ahead. 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for such a beautiful class, Maharaj. Very grateful to you. Yes, Maharaj, you are saying when we progress in our bhakti, we might get, you know, uh, think that we are great. So how, you know, how to be cautious about that we are, we are insignificant, whatever we are achieving, it's only because of the mercy of the Lord. So how do we, you know, always be in that consciousness, Maharaj, please help us. Well, that you can adopt that mindset, but you, unless you support that adopted mindset by association with the devotees, it'll become very difficult to maintain. Because when we are not in association, the mind takes us in different areas. And we can also start to think that, you know, uh, I'm as good as the Lord, or I'm an incarnation of the Lord, or I'm specially empowered by the Lord. Or we can think of them, the mind can take you in different ways, depending on what's happening. So when you associate with devotees, you find that in that association, you have to develop the qualities that are conducive to associations such as humility, tolerance, pridelessness, simplicity, knowledge. All of these qualities are facilitated in the association of devotees and they prevent us in that association, we are protected from these wrong mentalities simply by that association. We cannot act like that in the association of devotees. It'll be exposed to what it is. That's why it's so important to have association of devotees. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Krishna. So true, Maharaj. Um, as soon as we leave the association of devotees, after this two, three hours of bhakti sangha and our chanting, and we go to material world, like our daily life, unfortunately we have to, uh, to earn. And it just a maya seems like, you know, it grabs you right there and uh, pride is right there in you. Sometime, uh, let's say you are an employer and you are uh, having a few employees working for you. At certain times, still uh, you think that you are, are feeding them, even though you are, um, if you are in real Krishna consciousness, you should know that Krishna is the doer and he is doing everything. But uh, sometimes that Maya just grabs you really hard and that pride comes in, Maharaj. So Maharaj, how to uh, subdue this pride and uh, and always be in that mood, okay, of, okay, that it's not me, it's, it's Krishna. Well, it is, so... <laughs> Yeah, so you have to understand by, by logic and by scripture. As Krishna says, Prakriti Grina Griyamanani Guni Karma Sarvasya Ahankara Vimudatma Kartaha Meti Manyate. The bewildered spirit soul under the influence of material energy thinks himself a doer of activity which are actually carried out by material nature. So when you come down to the uh, understanding of our position within an action, we are one fifth of that action. We are not, we haven't provided the facilities for the action, nor are we the time element, the facilities, the super soul, the endeavor, all of these things make the activity successful. So we're small, we're just one, one fifth of the, of the activity. But because we're acting, we think we're the doer. But we are simply the desirer. We get credit for the right desire, which puts the activity in motion. But the activity in motion facilitates the activity in a certain way. In other words, things are provided everything is doing, but it's Krishna. Krishna is making everything happen by your desire, either materially or spiritual. Yes, Maharaj, desires. Thank you, Maharaj, beautiful. Yeah, that, that's why we say all glories to Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> 
all glories to my spiritual master, because that helps us understand, yeah, we're not the doer. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, that desire is a, is a beautiful answer, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Any other questions or, or realization, dear devotees? Please go ahead. Maharaj, which city are you in right now? I'm in Numbayapur, France, in our farm community here. Oh, okay. I just, yeah, I just got here last night. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tandavat Pranam, Srila Prabhupada, Kishapur Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Hare Krishna. Shamagori, Hare Krishna, Hajai Ho. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. We are uh, happy, and that's the reason why I had to do it on Friday this week, because yesterday I traveled for the whole day, and so I wasn't able to do this program until today, so. which is normally a Thursday program. Mm -hmm. Tangi Mataji, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your grace. Thank you so much, Maharaj. In spite of your traveling the whole day yesterday, uh, still you came and uh, gave us the nectar. And this is uh, too much of us to ask from you at this age. That's what uh, we are feeling. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your association and example. Yeah, well, this is why we travel. We travel so we can reach more people, <laughs> reach different people. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, at your age, uh, still traveling and preaching all of us, and night you reach there, morning you are giving class. So thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your services, Maharaj. Dear devotees, if nobody has any further question or any realization, uh, please let us pay our obeisances to Maharaj. And uh, thank you so much. Pancha, Kalakaru, Vashacha, Tripa, Sindhavacha, Patitanam, Pavanepyo, Prashtavepyo, Nimonama. Gantar Shrimad Bhagavatam ki Jai Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada ji ki Jai Koli Nais Chandra Moli Swami Maharaj ji ki Jai Thank you Maharaj Thank you so much Thank you Maharaj Thank you so much Thank you Maharaj